Hey everyone, uh, welcome back to the uh, Azure Back to School. So I say welcome back. This is my second year doing this fantastic series. I absolutely love it. Um, this uh, time we're not going to talk about Azure Functions. Well, maybe we will. Maybe I'll make it part of the presentation. So definitely we'll talk about API First Design and Azure API Management. Hopefully you guys are doing lots of different types of APIs and are using the fantastic tool that is Azure API Management. We'll take a look at some of the pragmatics of utilizing API first design with the utility. So we'll look at uh, things based on integrations, we'll look at uh, scaffolding, we'll look at the editors, we'll look at the open API spec, a whole bunch of things. So uh, myself, Joël Hébert, everybody calls me Jojo. Hopefully I will make some friends just like I used to do when I used to go back to school in, the, in September, that is. Uh, so ping me on Twitter if you got any questions or if you need any aid in your API first journey, I'd uh, be glad to help you. So what's the agenda for today? So we're going to start off by looking at an integration where a third-party tool is integrated directly into Azure API Management. We'll look at the pragmatics of such and discuss a little bit on what exactly is API first design. After that, we'll look at a, an API management centric approach of doing API first design. If you don't want to utilize a third party tool, see what uh, tools are available to you, what are your options. We'll then shift to the scaffolding part. So we'll look at the scaffolding, how you can generate the code and the unit tests uh, out of a third party tool. We'll look what you can do in Visual uh, Studio Code and what options there are for both Azure Functions and Azure API Management for you to automatically generate that code uh, for you to look at. So first and foremost, I very much like uh, what I found here on Swagger Apps. I want to discuss a little bit about what API first design is. So if you haven't um, seen the term before, let's just zoom in here and take a little look. So one of the ways that you can embark on your journeys to building these APIs is uh, doing what's called the code first approach and this is what comes naturally to people we've been doing this for a long time whether you're opening something up in vb6 c++ well you get a spec or some kind of you know directive strategic document whatever it may be and then you start coding away and then you basically then worry about the you know the contract documentation we know that when you build an api it has to be discoverable right there are specs that are usually generated after the fact right whether it's an open api spec or whatever the case might be. Um, but once you're done doing this API here, most of the time people have not collaborated a lot with the clients or the people intended to use the API. They then go ahead and deploy that. Uh, they do what is called a virtualization by putting it inside of um, API management. So this takes a lot of time, right? So by the time you're done doing some alterations to the API, you're interacting with the partner, then the partner has some comments. You still have to go back in the code, change the code, redeploy, re-virtualize, and then let the partner take a look at it inside of the port note portal to see if the you know the the, um, the alterations are okay or not. When you go and utilize the design first option. This one is uh, quite a bit better for collaboration. So whether you're using a tool like stoplight.io or Swagger Hub, uh, you're basically going to be able to invite other users or people that are collaborating with you to design that API. So you'll be able to go off of maybe a base template, build the API as go, have everybody else come in and either aid you with that design or comment on the design. Um, but once you basically have a close to final rendition or that final rendition, then there's toolings available to basically create boilerplate template for you to then go ahead and apply the business rules and code the API, right? So it's really a, a shift in design thinking. So whereas you usually used to go into the console, get ready and, you know, show how good you are at serverless or if you're into app APIs, doesn't matter which one. Um, we're, we're going away from that now and now we're going to start with the design, right? So first things first, let's go ahead and take a look. What is the, uh, the tooling that you usually use to do this design? So one of the more familiar ones in the industry, right, is the open API spec. So if we take a look at comparative approach of the older spec to this spec, you'll see that it's been reduced quite a bit, right? So if you guys have been utilizing tools to generate, um, GUIs or other things, you'll, you pretty much for sure I've heard of Swagger um, that basically uses a spec and then does some renditions so I'll show you guys Swagger Hub in uh, just a few minutes but you'll see one of the things that um, is quite different from the OpenAPI 2 spec towards the 3 is they've basically combined some of these 
into smaller areas so it's a lot easier to comprehend some of the things instead of remembering everything as you're designing so one of the fun part uh, one of the fun things um, is designing it doesn't have to be that difficult uh, you might never have looked at a, a JSON before right you you've coded things inside of an API app you use things like a swashbuckles to generate them and then you've never actually looked at it you just import it into API management well perhaps it's time for you to come in and um, leverage something like swagger hub so here we have a third-party tool smart bear swagger hub we also have another third-party tool here so another uh, vendor so this one is stoplight.io they both do similar things you can design your api you can collaborate so we'll start off by looking at swagger hub and its integration with azure api management and a little bit about this api design first so what i've done before this presentation i just went here and created new and just for time's sake here uh, i took an open api spec 3 and a template that which is a simple api gave me this simple uh, rendition here right so uh, right here so we have the uh, rend the yaml rendition here so i have an open api spec and you'll see that uh, all of the different areas that we were discussing earlier are here and now i can manipulate these and show what i want my api to be and basically model it out on the right hand side here you'll see that i have my api shows me what version uh, it's using uh, the open api spec version 3 um, i can also see what my um, api is going to look like i can try it out uh, i can see what the return values are i have some samples i see the return codes so basically i can see the code auto documenting itself or i can see how the you know whatever i'm doing here how it's going to render uh, one thing that i very much like are their schemas here and if you know how to utilize the tool you can reuse this have effective reuse fewer different schemas um, so in here essentially right there's this sample api first example and in here um, i've got different tags that i can utilize so if i take a look here at the open api specification this so here I have the servers object. So it's an array of servers provide connectivity information to a target server. So very much I like referencing the spec while I'm working in here. And then here you'll see that I have effectively two different types of uh, servers that are you know referenced here. So I had the one that came with the tooling, which is a, a, a API auto mocking by Swagger Hub. So effectively the um, the call would actually go to Swagger Hub. And as it's going to Swagger Hub, it's going to accept those requests and then send them back to me. I've decided to fire against my my proxy on my API manager because I wanted to go through that true flow. So if you do have any WAF appliances or intrusion detection systems, you even want your modeling and your test to go through that. Um, that's a good idea, actually. Um, go ahead and change it so that this way you can do the mock inside of API management and not through like a third party server. So as you're going through this and in designing, so this is a simple API, you can you can basically uh, design your API here and then give it your, you know, here I have a, an inventory on a get request, right? So I've got an inventory um, nomenclature here, a get, I am describing what I want the operation to be, what the response values are. I can alter that as need be. The fun thing with this is you get to see a visual of what it is. You get to interact. So if someone were to come along and say this 201, um, so, I, so I, I appreciate that you did not use a 200. So for those of you who are you know, very strict about APIs, a 201 create is a lot better than a 200 OK. Tells you a lot more. So you would add that comment. And as you're perusing, you'd have 10, 20, 15 different comments from all the people that are overseeing or designing. And then you may resolve or do other things with it. And it would go here under this uh, resolve comment. So there's that whole collaborative effort. So once you're ready, or if you want to send, um, like I said, um, with the use of this, you know, this server tag here, where it's going to send the calls to the back end, you can definitely take advantage of something called this integration inside of Swagger Hub, right? So this here, I've attached it to my API management instance. So if I go here inside of Azure, I have an instance called API First E. So it's just a simple rendition. And if I take a look at the settings here, what I've done is I've attached Swagger Hub to my Azure API management instance. And I basically signed in, did a save and execute. So now these two are linked. So when I link them, 
Uh, notice that this is called, right? This is a simple API, simple inventory API. Well, I go into API first East, and then there's my design here, right? So I didn't go into Azure API management. I didn't click on any, um, you know, add APIs and import in anything. I've effectively linked this to Swagger Hub. So now if I'm inside of Swagger Hub, right? And you see these settings, this is a simple API. I can go ahead and work. Um, so this is a simple API. So I'll put uh, just a dash. So Joel test and let me go ahead and save this. So I'm just going to save it. So it's successfully saved. Now we'll go to my integration point and I'm going to fire off a, an execution and it says the integration was executed. I will go back. I'm just going to switch over to an example API back to my simple inventory. And you'll notice here that we have the alteration, right? So that same holds true if I wanted to do operations and whatnot. So the fun part with this is obviously, right, I have my area where I'm working in here. I can see what type of documentation is being generated. Um, I can work with different partners. I can collaborate inside my API manager. I have the element, right? It's basically virtualized as we say. Um, and then in the API uh, portal, I can also see what type of rendition is I'm going to have, right? So it's not only about that documentation. If you're working directly with APM, this is the, the deprecated portal just for demonstration's sake. So as I continue here, let's just wait for this. Um, take a look at the different products. Let's give this a second. So I'm going to go to the APIs. I am probably need to sign in one second. Let's go ahead and go to the portal. Um, the token expired there. So um, let's just reload that. That's why I didn't see the APIs. It's a, it was a scope issue. So now if I go back to the APIs, I'll be able to see that, that API that I added. You can definitely put it into a different product if you don't want it to be uh, visible by default. But remember I added that dash Joel test. Uh, here it is inside of the portal. Obviously that this reflects what we have inside of the API manager, but now the partners that you're, you know, working with can peruse your portal, see how the API is, is being generated. They can look at sample code if they want. They know what type of responses are coming back. They can see if it's getting mocked or not. I'm mocking it because I want it to go to this instance and come back, not necessarily wanting it to go to the Swagger Hub instance. So what do I mean by that? So let's take a look here at uh, mocking with a partner versus mocking with uh, API management. So when you are mocking uh, with a partner, so let's say that I am, you know, I have a, a partner here. So that partner, you know, is, is working hard with me on <laughs> all of this stuff. And the, my API manager has a path, right? So the API manager, um, actually, if I draw that correctly, the API management that I just showed you, you saw the portal, but there's another one, it's called the proxy. So the proxy will either go through something like an Azure front door and then go out to your partner or go through something like a web app firewall, intrusion detection system, and go back out to your partner. So if your partner is doing, you know, some sample tests here and effectively calling your proxy or that mocking endpoint that I talked about, you want it to go through these natural paths. Um, it, sometimes JSON can not be formed in, uh, very well. So I'll give you an example. You take a JSON and you decide that you don't want to do an array for the countries and then you set country uh, and then delimiter, country delimiter, country delimiter. Sad to say, but once you put your 13th delimiter, uh, Azure Application Gateway is going to think that you're doing SQL injection and it's going to stop you. So um, it's very good to go through these natural flows. Uh, I know that this is just a banality of an example, but the more that the partners and those aiding you um, can see the, the reactions of either your intrusion detection systems, your your app gateways or the Azure front doors, whichever security construct, we can name any third party tooling here, uh, the better it is, right? So you, it's up to you. We can choose to to mock with the uh, the Stoplight IO or the Swagger Hub mocking engine. Uh, it's up to you. But uh, there, there is something to be said about going through that natural flow. Um, so that's just uh, one thing to, to consider. So what did we see? So let's just recap. So it's possible to go in here and then design your API. You're, you're able to now peruse your API here on the right hand side and to see if it has, you know, everything that you wish it, it would have. You can collaborate with the partners. 
you do have the opportunity here to determine where you're going to send the the mock tests right so you can send them uh, like you see here to uh, a mocking plugin with the partner or you can send it through the proxy endpoint on your Azure API management stack going through those real world uh, security appliances that you have in the dev area for sure um, you see you saw that there is an integration where I can integrate this element here right into Azure API management and you also saw that all the while while we are designing collaborating together the partner can also go see inside your API manager here your portal can see the changes in real time and can also try it from here, right? So you can try it from this area and then you can also possibly try it from, from this area here. Both are, are valid. Uh, lastly, there's an element here, it's very important in API design first, is the code gen options, right? So this vendor here has um, the opportunity for you to do a client SDK, so you can generate something in C Sharp. You can also generate the server stub, right? So the client SDK is someone connecting to your API. The server stub is you rendering this API here for you to host and then um, push it out. So you see there's a whole bunch of different ones. Um, there's ASP.NET Core here. Lastly, there's uh, the documentation that can be generated and um, you can download the, the spec here, right? So, okay, so shifting gears. We saw it's possible to design with a partner that's fully integrated. It's also possible to just utilize uh, Azure API Management. So if I go to you know Azure API Management, you don't necessarily have to work with a third-party partner. It's a lot better for collaborative efforts. But if um, you know you don't do that many APIs, you just want to delve into it. Uh, you just want to take a look. Um, Azure API Management. If you go to you know the API. Let's take a look here. So we're just looking at some, some centric ways inside of Azure API Management to work with the API. So I'm just gonna take this Echo API, just a sample one. On the front end, you have that uh, you know little open API spec editor. <clears throat> and you'll notice here, right? So I've got a JSON representation and of an open API spec. It's a 3.01. And here on the right hand side, you know, if I zoom in here, right, I can edit the information, add operations, add different tags. So if I want to go ahead and, and modify things without uh, actually going into the, you know, the whole JSON and, and altering it, you know, you can just go in here, alter it, it'll add some, some different elements. If I want to add an operation, this is quite nice here. So, you know, the display name is, I'm going to add, a, now let's say we want to add a users and uh, the url would be slash users um this will, let's call this like uh, hospital users and the method is going to be a get so this is an new item to add so i'm just going to add this and it says it already exists right so i'm just going to do a user joel and then boom um, here we go. So I added this earlier just as a small test. And then here, here I am. So here I am altering an, an open API specification inside of Azure API Management. There's no API uh, anywhere else for this uh, backend element. So one thing that you could do if you wanted to, you don't want to invest in a, you know, a third party tool. So you go to API Management. Let's go to the API here and just create a blank API, right? So I'll just go ahead and create that. Name. I'm going to call it test design. You know, right here, let's we'll just call this design and let's create this. And so here it is. So you can go ahead and just start designing here. So if I wanted to, you know, add an operation, so let's, I'll add my users. So slash users, and we'll make this one's a get. and. Uh, And then I'll add this. So there we go. So I've got a you know a get operation, a this pathing, and it's giving me descriptors. I can add a whole bunch of things, uh, but for now. And there we go. So that is saved and uh, here. So it's possible to intrinsically go in Azure API Management, right? Create a blank API, utilize the Open API. Notice what it says here: Open API Specification Editor. I find a lot of people don't know about this feature here in uh, Azure API Management. So basically you use this little element here or you can go ahead and you know hand alter the, the different things. So one thing to consider is uh, do go on the API Management um, 
uh, import restrictions and understand that when you will import something later on or you do import something there are some things to to consider so i would um, be cognizant that you know if you're using you know the the servers element don't put two two uh, epi manager will select the first one right so when you are modeling um, just go ahead and just put one for now um, take a good read on this one and um, it, it'll come in handy later on so uh, that's just one piece of advice that I have. So now, you know, we've imported something with Swagger Hub. We've created something with API Management. So why don't we go into VS Code and take a look at how we can scaffold those two things that we've, you know, effectively designed. So I've got two things that are um, added here. So two extensions. I have the Azure API Management extension and, oh, sorry, it's this one here. The Azure Function extension. So if I go to uh, Azure here and I go take a look at, let's start playing with the uh, Azure API Management extension. So we'll start with going into my subscription and notice that my API Manager is there. So it's called API First East. So I'm just gonna open this up and you'll see the API that was imported in. So the simple inventory API. So I can do a whole bunch of operations against it, right? So I can, uh, do different things. I can delete it. I can extract some ARM templates. Uh, the one I want is uh, to actually scaffold this. So what this is going to do, so it's going to ask me what language do you want to scaffold this new Azure function in. So I'm going to decide on C sharp. And for this, I'm just going to call it uh, scaffold.test. Right, so just uh, just for lack of better wording, and it's gonna ask me where do you want to put this. So I'll put this onto the desktop. I've already got a scaffold folder ready, and let's go ahead and output that. So it's gonna use something in the background called Auto Rest. I don't know if you've seen that before, but this is heavily used in the industry. So you can go to eka.ms Auto Rest to look at the tooling. It's gonna start scaffolding a Azure function for me based on the definition that I have. That's in API Management. So I don't have to go and get the extract. Uh, the, the spec, I don't have to do anything, right? So it's got um, the capability here within the tooling, right? So we'll just wait a minute here. So it's, it's basically doing its unit of work. So as it's doing this, we're just gonna wait and see, it won't take too long. So now it says, do you want to open the folder for the generated files? Absolutely, we want to see what was generated. So let's go take a look at this simple inventory. So I trust, so let's go here. So, all right, so now I have a, inside my scaffolded folder, I have you know, an Azure function here. So let's take a look at what we have in here, right? So if I take a look at this file here, so that's going to be the spec. So I have an SHFFA. Uh, it's got the Open API 3.01 spec for me as part of my project. And then take a look here. I've got an inventory API. And in this inventory API, right, I have a function. So this has got the, you know, the get operation. It wants me to do the 200 and the 400. Um, it does have the, you know, the correct operator and the route for inventory. And um, it should also have a model for me and notice here there we go those are the models so if you do have some required uh, elements uh, it will do um, an if name equals null throw a null uh, exception and it will create you you know for lack of a better word these dto's for you to utilize to deserialize or move your data around so you have inventory item and a manufacturer here, right? So this is the one that we had in Swagger Hub. So we had in Swagger Hub, we attached the API management. I went into the API management tool and now I am extracting an Azure function that I can now start working towards, right? So when your model is closer to its, uh, or when it is complete, uh, or you've come up to a, to a decision where it's time to scaffold, you can utilize that. API manager uh, to do so. So if I want to show you a secondary example, I'm just going to close this one. Uh, let's go to that test design. I think I added um, that one. Um, so let's go see. There should probably be one operations I think that I added called get user. So same thing. So this is the one where we went inside of uh, Azure API manager and I decided to, you know, hand bomb for lack of a better word with the, the editor uh, uh, functional spec. So, you know, so I'm just going to put you know, handmade.test here. 
and we decide to go with C sharp I am going to go on the desktop and we'll go to the second scaffolding folder and we'll utilize that it's going to take a little bit here um, shouldn't take too too long okay so it's asking me if I want to open up that folder absolutely we want to see what was generated so I trust and okay so inside the Visual Studio Code I've got a user's API right so here it is it just created the stub for me and then I can go ahead and code against it right so evidently the more routes that you have the more different operations um, it's it's going to give you a different you know experience this is just so you can see you can go in the Azure API management utilize what's there intrinsically and then scaffold right so you're effectively doing um, API design first by designing collaborating maybe only internally or with a few other people very hard to to collaborate in that tool compared to like a stoplight IO or swagger hub but quite interesting on uh, what gets generated right so there is one other um, use case that we should look at right so we do have API management over here so but what if you you know you wanted to scaffold what you're going to want to scaffold not with Azure API management but uh, through Azure the Azure function Okay, so for this next example, instead of utilizing Azure API Management to scaffold, what we're going to do is we'll utilize Azure Functions. So first things first, we need uh, something to, to derive from in this instance. So let's go ahead and go to the portal. So inside of the portal, we'll be able to extract a, an API spec. So let's go take one of the specs. So in this one, let's go to the API. We'll take uh, the one that we just created manually, the test design. And notice here, right, there's the API definition, right? So let's go ahead and take uh, we'll take it the JSON file here. And there it is. So we can basically take that. I'll put it inside of, you know, sometimes you can save these directly. Uh, sometimes you just have to you know, file, save as. And yeah, I'll put that on the desktop and we'll call it uh, demo.json. All files save. Now it's on the desktop. And let's go back to. Okay, so we're just going to head over to the command palette and select Azure Functions, new project. We're going to browse. We're going to go into the desktop and we have a scaffold function right we're just going to select this select the language so definitely we'll go ahead oh, well i took javascript it doesn't really matter which one you take uh, actually it does matter which one you take so let's go back so i'll take c sharp uh net core and notice that here there's a HTTP trigger for open API specification. So that's in preview. So you could basically click on this. It's going to ask you, well, we'll keep this at uh, company.function, doesn't really matter. Uh, it's going to ask you for the spec, right? So inside there, I put a uh, spec called demo.json. I'll show you how I got that. And we're going to just open up uh, in a new window. So let's see what happens here. So it should be creating a new project, generating from open API. And we should be seeing that that scaffolded uh, Azure function there. So give it a couple of seconds. Okay, so finished creating the project. So I will just um, go and say that I trust the authors and there it is. So a couple of different ways of scaffolding. They're both utilizing auto rest. Uh, so if you take a look here, um, that's going to be the same as what I, I have in the other one, right? So there's not going to be a lot of like different variations between uh, utilizing one technique versus the other. So you can either start from uh, Azure Functions, scaffold by utilizing the spec, um, or you can go in API management and then utilize what's there and then just generate through um, uh, auto rest, right? So uh, if you only have the spec and you want to generate something over here, you can go ahead and do so. So sometimes um, some companies will give you a spec and then you can take that and gen generate clients or, or do different things. So uh, uh, Swagger Hub is actually really good for you uh, to utilize that. So a couple of different ways of doing things. Um, so one thing to consider is, um, remember at the start when we had this Swagger Hub is fully integrated, 
Um, sometimes you can go to um, things like stoplight.io has excellent capabilities, right? So you can go ahead and take a look at what's getting generated. There's, you know, full mocking. Uh, you can invite people to the workspace and then give them, you know, owner admin, uh, guest viewer and have them interact and you can design with them. Um, but you can also, um, if I go um, over here, you can also download the um, the spec, right? So if I, you know, click on this um, this YAML here, right? So it says uh, Open API Spec 3.0. Uh, if I'm interested, I either download this or put it inside of a, a YAML file, and I can import this into uh, API Management, and then after that, I can utilize the same technique I was just showing you with the scaffolding, uh, so on and so forth, right? So um, depending on what the tool of choice is for you, right? It could be Stoplight.io, could be Swagger Hub. Um, depends on what, uh, you know, I always say that familiarity is productivity. So if your team is more familiar with this, you may adopt it. The other one, in the end, a lot of the, the companies do similar things. So um, it's up to you to make that decision. But it's good for you to, to see that there are different products out there. Um, so you can do things intrinsically in API management with not a lot of collaboration, but still get, you know, as they say, your feet wet with um, modeling and doing API first design. You can go ahead and use Swagger Hub, generate some things. Uh, you'll notice that if you do uh, delve in here, uh, what gets generated doesn't look exactly like um, uh, what they have over there with the uh, API manager and the auto rest generation, right? So I think this in the background uses both sharp. I've used this with success. I've used it uh, to build some very large clients where I had to tap into about 15 different APIs from one provider and it uh, had great success with it. So to all their own, right? So on this said, um, I'd like to thank you for coming to this session and taking a look at some possibilities on API design first with API management. So you saw that there is a, you know, an intrinsic tool that you can utilize and model. You saw that um, they have some extensions that have scaffolding capabilities for you to utilize these specs that you've built and build out the code. Um, one thing to note is uh, Swagger Hub, when you do generate that C-sharp client, it will create um, different tests. Uh, there's other constructs out there that you can model with. There are definitely Postman and other ones, but I wanted to show you today things that are intrinsically um, adapted to API management. So I like that Swagger Hub that has that native integration where you can send things uh, directly to API management like you saw. They're completely linked together. API management has something intrinsically so that you can go ahead and alter it. You can also go to stoplight.io that doesn't have full integration. You can definitely take that file down, bring it to API management, and then scaffold at the end when you're ready to go. So uh, a couple of different ways of doing things. So it's up to you to adapt to what best fits. So uh, that's my Twitter address there. So hopefully uh, we can get to know each other. And I wish you a great back to school and uh, enjoy the rest of these sessions. So on that, thank you very much. And uh, don't be shy to reach out. Cheers.